right, folks, let's talk about AEW Rampage from this past Friday, the 25th of November, Black Friday. It was a special 4 p.m. airtime. And I know this show doesn't get a lot of ratings. I'm not here to discuss the ratings. I don't give a shit about them. I care about wrestling. I love pro wrestling. And if you do too, you can't begin to, un to explain to me or make me understand why you're not watching this show. Especially this episode. It kicked off with Top Flight. Darius and Dante Martin taking on FTR. In a match for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship, of course, once again, Bobby Cruz getting to introduce it because he's a Ring of Honor ring announcer, and Ian Riccoboni on commentary. God, I wish this kid was full-time. He's great, just as this match was. This was a modern-day Rock and Roll Express versus the Midnight Express. No, the Rock and Roll Express couldn't jump and leap and bound the way the Martin brothers do, but... It's a modern day. Like I said, it's a modern day because FTR, as good as they are, as good as wrestlers and ground workers and such as they are, they're still a little bit different than the Midnight Express. They're both a modern version of those type of teams. And this was amazing. Top Flight, I knew these kids were good, but they, mu they must be working out together even more because this was probably the best match I've seen either of them have in singles or tag team action. Now, I know that's because FTR is in the ring. I'm not a dummy. But, wow, these kids just set up moves. Now, here's how it worked, though. With the style of top flight, it's high risk, high reward. Meaning, when they nailed these incredible high-flying maneuvers off the top rope, um, bounding off the middle rope, working together with the flipping and the throwing each other, and it's just amazing stuff. It put uh, Cash and, and Dax on their heels. They they were just trying to avoid being upset here. Several times, it looked like Top Flight might pull this off. The difference was that when Darius uh, and his brother were caught off guard, when the high risk, high reward was more risk than reward, well, FTR took control with brain busters and DDTs and Irish whips and giant clotheslines. When they caught these kids, when they brought them down to earth, it was lights out for top flight. So the question of the match was, which style was going to prevail? Well, look, FTR are too big of veterans. They're, they've been around too long. They've been a tag team for too many years to lose to this team. Now, again, they were on their heels numerous times, and it really looked like top flight had a chance. But in the end, Dante Martin's doing a bunch of leaps off of the ropes. Look great, look good, but FTR is following every move he makes, pointing. You can see their strategy in it. Like, look, there he is. No, there he is. Okay, you go there, you go there. This is how we're going to respond to this. And it worked beautifully because he jumped himself into the, into the big rig, into the finishing move of FTR. I feel like I didn't do this, this match justice. It was about a 12-minute match, beautifully done. Everything about wrestling that I love. A little bit of a styles clash that worked. High flyers against ground and pounders. You remember the old NXT matches back when I used to watch NXT? FTR versus the Alpha Academy. And stuff. Even though Alpha Academy is a different team, different style of team. But how good they were, how solid they were, how much you could have watched them all the time. That's what this match was about. And it felt like Top Flight was really being built to be serious, serious tag team title contenders. Ring of Honor, AEW. Uh, AAA, what have you. They really, FTR said on Dynamite that they really wanted to see the Martin Brothers become the next big thing like them in wrestling and tag team wrestling. And boy, this match showed us that that could happen, that they may not be far away from that. What a terrific match. What a way to kick this off. Again, I know there are smart fans, smarks out there bemoaning why did this match happen? What did the top flight do to earn this? Come on, guys. Just, just love pro wrestling, right? Hey, Nobody loves the more logical, the more pure, the more the more brain feeding that wrestling is, the more I love it. But you gotta take what you get out there and you gotta find the good in it and you gotta, you know, you gotta understand this modern day. I'm never going to say wrestling has evolved. Those words are never gonna come out of my lips because that's not what's happened. It has changed. Wrestling has changed, the wrestling fan has changed. And you either, like I said, you got to give up on wrestling, which I tried to do numerous times. I tried to follow MMA. I tried to follow glory kickboxing. I tried my best, and I can't. I love pro wrestling 
even in, even in its modern day form. And I can find value in it. And this match had a hell of a lot of value. I don't care if you're an old school fan or not. I don't care if Top Flight really earned the match or not. Ring of Honor doesn't have a weekly television show. So for them to have random matches just because it's a good matchup, I don't see the problem with that. You know, they're trying to build the brand up. They're trying to get themselves a TV deal. Tony Khan's working on it uh, behind the scenes as best he can. So as that's happening, just give us some good, what, what's Ring of Honor? Oh, if this is Ring of Honor, this is what I want to see, right? That This is trying to brand Ring of Honor. And if this is the Ring of Honor brand, it's a great one. The next part of the show was up. Uh, package a video package of powerhouse hobbs very well done very well cut very well edited everything about it was good it just it took you into powerhouse hobbs world like his community and it showed scenes from that as he drove around in a car and got out and stood by a mural on the sidewalk just really really gritty stuff showing you that he come from a tough neighborhood he had a tough life and now he's in wrestling and he, he had a quote I, i'm paraphrasing it kind of here because i didn't i typed it up real quick on notes while watching but i didn't pause it to make sure i got it exactly right but it was something like just like everyone has taken everything that meant anything away from me i'm going to take everything that means anything from you basically powerhouse hob saying look I'm not stopping. Yes, I lost in that triple threat match for the TNT title and the Ring of Honor television title, but I'm not done. I'm coming for everything I can get my hands on, and I don't care who I have to hurt and who I have to go through. I'm taking what I want. Everything I've ever wanted was taken from me. Now, I'm coming for what I want now, and nobody's going to stop me. Really good stuff. Um, really way to build him up. I hope this kid keeps growing, because like I said in the segment talking about Dynamite, he is absolutely part of the future of this company, no doubt about it.